Hey guys how are you all beautiful people? Hope all of you are doing fine. And yes this is next part of Godlike Hokage in Naruto. The Garagara no Mi is known as the strongest fruit in the world of One Piece. In Naruto world, the blood limit would grant the strongest power for those ninjas. But what if the Garagara no Mi is found in the world of Naruto and after it is eaten it will be like a blood limit power? Well, the MC just took that fruit. This story begins before the second ninja war by two years. So let's start without any delay. Since we agreed that none of us wants this, then you can continue your discussion. Naito kept gazing at everyone, but none of them responded, so after he said this sentence, he turned and walked away. After he left, the silence continued for a long time. After a while, someone finally spoke. Well, this can work too. If everything else happened to the seal, Naito Dorno can stop the Kyuubi again. Naito's arrival changed everyone's attitudes. The moment he left, Sarutabi looked at Danza, since he couldn't say anything back to Naito, Danza didn't want to look back at Sarutabi. Still, his anger was clear. Naito has just put his boundaries. He won't allow anyone to intervene with Kushina's matter, even if the hate was clear in everyone's eyes to that beast, they couldn't help but suppress it deep into their hearts. Among the shelters, there was one who looked a little bit placed far away from the others. Kushina sat there looking a bit awkward, from time to time, someone will pass by the window, and give her an incomparable disgust and hatred look. Like Naruto in the original. Although the Kyuubi's runaway was completely unrelated to her, the people in the village hated her for that. The moment they know she was the Jinchuki of the Kyuubi they regarded her as the root of all evil, making her believe that she killed their loved ones, which made her blame herself for everything. Naito pushed the door and walked in to find her all stressed out. He went quickly to her side and gently grabbed her little hand. The look on Kushina's face made Naito feel really pitiful which it's a really rare thing. Naito gently patted her head and comforted her, this is not your fault, don't blame yourself. But, because of me, Konoha got destroyed, and so many people died. Kushina looked really sad, she was biting her lips with a self-blaming expression. Looking at how miserable she was. Naito extended his hands around her and hugged her really tight, and whispered in her ear. This was the work of someone else behind the scenes, he manipulated things to destroy Konoha. What? Kushina got surprised and looked at Naito, waiting for further explanation. Naito whispered again, think about it, do you really believe that the eight seals can be destroyed this easily? Obviously impossible, and remember the last time you were taken away by the clouds. After he reminded her about that accident, Kushina suddenly looked like she realized something. It's a bit strange, do you think the cloud? No, those people weren't skilled enough, they wouldn't be able to destroy the seal. Naito shook his head and said, I can finally confirm the person behind this accident. Who is it? Kushina looked confused, she couldn't believe that someone can actually break the seal without her noticing, and even control the Kyuubi. Naito took a deep breath, then his eyes flashed, and finally revealed the truth to Kushina, saying, Have you ever heard of the name? Achiha Madara. Achiha Madara. Kushina looked terrified the moment she heard his name and couldn't help but ask, the one who fought against the first Hokage Senju Hakirama. Didn't he die a long time ago? No, he's not dead. Yet. He's still working on his plans in the dark, we kind of crossed our swords once before. Naito looked at Kushina, and told her everything about Madara. He didn't care that she will tell someone else's about this because it won't affect Naito anyway. 
Listening to Naito's words, Kushina was first horrified, then she gradually calmed down. Still, she believed him. After she heard the whole story, Kushina felt a little bit relieved, she gently leaned her head against Naito's chest and lied there in his arms. She felt sad about the whole damage that Konoha has suffered, yet, she was happy that she wasn't the cause of that accident. Kushina has finally fully recovered, after that she focused on controlling the Kyuubi's chakra and enhance her strength, but also be sure not to let the Kyuubi break free again. Still, a lot of unexpected things were happening. The elders of the village knew that everything was fine now, and they didn't change their attitude toward Kushina, still, they became really protective about letting her go out of the village. However, the people didn't share the same idea as them, they didn't care about whose fault was that they all treated her with incomparable disgust and hate. In their view, Kushina is the Kiyuubi, and she killed their family and friends. Although because of Naito, no one will pick up on her, or even dare to say something to her, still they all looked at her with disgust and hateful eyes. What Kushina was experiencing now is much cruel than what Naito or Naruto has experienced in the original. Naito can prevent everyone from picking up on Kushina, but he can't change their attitudes. It will always be this way, respect for Naito, and hate for Kushina. Some people were even talking about how Kushina is just an evil fox beast, and she's not worthy for Naito. Although they didn't say these things directly to her, it was finally passed by to Kushina's ears. Rebuild Konoha, at Naito's home. There was no expensive furniture, everything looked simple. Naito opened the door and walked in then turned to close it, suddenly Kushina came over and hugged him from behind. Naito-kan, do you think it would have been better? If I didn't exist. She was trying her best to control the Kiyuubi and help Konoha, but no one understood her. Kushina is a powerful person, although no one understands her, she was still working hard. What is behind her sentence wasn't sadness nor giving up, but disappointment in Konoha. Your existence is the meaning of my existence. Naito turned and hugged her tight. The atmosphere has become very warm, whether it's Naito or Kushina, it always felt the warmth for them when they are together. They stayed that way for a long time, suddenly Naito whispered, saying, Kushina, let's go. Let's leave Konoha. Leave Konoha. Kushina looked confused, even if she wanted to leave, the village wouldn't let her go since she's the Kiyuubi's Jinshriki. We don't belong here, we're outsiders in the first place, Konoha is just a rest point in our journey, it's not the end. Naito could feel her anxiety and worry, so he grabbed her hands gently and said, we don't need to stay in here if it makes you suffer, just say the word and no one will stop us from leaving. Even if she's the Jinshriki of the Kiyuubi, if he decides to leave, no one will stop Naito even the Sarutabi himself. If it weren't for Kushina's strong chakra, they wouldn't find a proper Jinshriki for the Kiyuubi in the first place. Her existence itself alone is protecting the village. However. People hate her and regard her as an enemy, which makes Naito feels very disappointing. The truth, Naito doesn't really care much about Konoha, what he really cares about is Kushina, and she's the only reason that made him stay this long. Kushina kept quiet for a long time, and with bitterness, she snuggled Naito and nodded gently. Upon seeing it, Naito smiled and touched her little chin and kissed her cheeks gently, then he carried her in his arms, opened the door, then the two of them flashed and disappeared. Naito didn't inform anyone about his departure. When the village finally realized that Naito and Kushina were missing, the elders got stunned. 
Saru to be reacted quickly and blocked all the news from coming out then sent some troops secretly to pursue Naito. Although Naito's intentions were really clear, and this kind of activity can only be considered as a rebellion, no one dared to declare Naito as a Nukanin. Of course, that was the right decision, they are not strong enough to declare Naito as Nukanin and list him in the bingo book, the man can destroy the whole village with one attack. Moreover, even if they listed him in the bingo book, who will dare to chase Naito? It's just a joke. In fact, this is wasn't the most disturbing thing about the whole situation, what Saru to be really feared, is if the other villagers knew about how Konoha lost two of their most potent war weapons. But this wasn't all, Konoha has also lost most of the Uchiha clan's combat powers and they were recently hit hard by the Kyuubi's breakout, which makes them really weak. This will very likely cause the breakout of the next war. The Shinobi Third World War Hope you made the right decision Naito. Tsunade sighed then shook her head, but in any case, she still supported his decision, after all, no one would withstand what Kushina has suffered. She felt really sorry for her and equally disappointed in Konoha. Sakumo, Dai, and the others kept silent about this matter and didn't speak. As for Danza, he left the village secretly, and no one knows where he's going. Land of Fire, in the forest. Kushina has never experienced those disgusted and hateful eyes after they left the village, and she finally became cheerful and happy again. After leaving Konoha, Naito has finally understood something. Perhaps this was the real intention of Madara, if he really wanted to kill Kushina, it would have been really easy for him even though he's currently so weak. However, Madara didn't want to kill Kushina, he did all of this to change the people's minds about Kushina and force them to hate her, which will eventually make her suffer, and her misery will also affect Naito and he will end up desperate. This is really the typical Uchiha Madara. Perhaps he wanted to control Naito this way and make him join his side. However, Naito will never stand together with Madara, the former dared to make Kushina suffer, and Naito will never forgive him for that. Slowly depressed these thoughts in his heart, Naito looked at Kushina in front of him, then smiled and pulled her hair from the back. Hey. Stop it. I just fixed it and now it's messed up again. Baker. Kushina plumped her chubby cheeks and looked at Naito. What? Naito laughed then stretched out two fingers and pinched her cheeks. Hey. Kushina stared at Naito with an evil look, then she suddenly, bit his fingers. It didn't hurt Naito, but Kushina didn't want to let go, so he deliberately moved his finger inside her mouth. Kushina felt that and immediately let go of his finger, her cheeks suddenly became really red, then she looked at him with a furious expression and said, Pervert. I hate you, I wish you die. Is that so? I am leaving then. Naito shrugged. Then he turned and walked away. No. Kushina suddenly pulled his hand. Naito turned around, then he looked at Kushina again, and stretched out his finger on her nose, and laughed. Kushina sighed as he was laughing then she stood up, if it were anyone else, she would have already beaten the hell out of him, but Kushina couldn't do anything to Naito, so she just gave up. You Naito. Where are we going next? We are not going to any place before. We deal with the Kyuubi first. Naito looked at Kushina and smiled. In order to avoid any more accidents with Kyuubi again, Naito decided to help Kushina control the Kyuubi's power, although he will always be with her, helping her control the Kyuubi's power will make her stronger, this way she will be able to protect herself which is undoubtedly better. In a quiet and elegant forest, the birds singing gave the place a special touch of harmony. 
Naito and Kushina had their breakfast then walked through the forest looking for a suitable place to train. Sarutabi has sent the Anbu to look for Naito and Kushina. However, he couldn't send a large number of them because he didn't want any news to get leaked out to the outside, which made finding them more difficult. In other words, as long as Naito keeps a low profile and doesn't get in touch with a lot of people, they will never find him. Naito came out to an open place with Kushina. This forest was actually near the borders of the Land of Fire. This country is enormous, it will be very difficult to find them in these forests. The first important thing to control the Kyuubi is to have a strong chakra on your own, secondly, to have great physical power. The good thing is you're up to these standards. Naturally, Kushin had tremendous physical power since she was from the Uzumaki clan, she also has a strong chakra, which allows her to suppress the Kyuubi for a while even after he breaks free from his seal. Naito explained this as he was walking around. Kushina was always looking at him and listening to his guidance. So, for a person like you, controlling the Kyuubi is very simple. It actually requires one step, and that is to defeat him. Defeat him. Kushina, who was quietly listening to Naito couldn't help but exclaim the moment she heard that word showing a surprised expression on her face. Naito nodded gently, then his expression suddenly became serious. Controlling the Kyuubi's chakra forcibly is not only risky but also not perfect. The Kyuubi is the strongest among all the Baijua, yet he's not invincible. For people like Uchiha Madara and Hakirama Senju, fighting against the Kyuubi is like playing with a kid. To be precise, the Baijua will always have the upper hand when it comes to chakra, yet they are using it stubbornly. They are not flexible when they are using their chakra, the only thing they do is a big Baiju Udama after another. But how can I defeat him, the Kyuubi is a fearless beast. Kushina couldn't believe she could do it. Naito looked at her then smiled and said, he's not that terrible, don't worry, I will always be by your side. If it were before, Naito would still manage to suppress the Kyuubi but not defeat him, but after he got controlled by the Madara, he must be more vulnerable than before which will make him easier to be conquered. Of course, if Naito were the Jinshriki, he would have forced him whether he liked it or not. Hmm. All right. When the accident happened, Kushina was unconscious, but she heard that Naito has easily defeated the Kyuubi. Indeed, as long as Naito is at her side, she doesn't need to be afraid of the Kyuubi. So all that we need now is to unlock the Eight Seal. Naito said this then smiled at her. Kushina hesitated a little, then she nodded, she believed in Naito, but not in herself, and if anything went wrong, Naito would help her reseal him again. After all, she could use the eight seal technique. Kushina's mind. This place is known as Saishin Sekai, which allows the Jinshriki and his Baijua to communicate with one another on a deeper plane of their subconscious minds. In front of Kushina, there was a massive iron gate with a seal on it. Behind that gate, their Kyuubi who looked angry was lying down inside his cage. Suddenly, he opened his eyes slowly and glanced. That bastard Uchiha Madara. The Kyuubi closed his eyes again thinking about that accident, and couldn't help but feel angry and annoyed, but also a little surprised that Madara is still alive. Moreover, he could feel that Madara's chakra was more terrible than before. In the past, when Madara had his eternal Munjeku share in Gan, he forcibly managed to control the Kyuubi completely and attack Konoha which made the Kyuubi hold a grudge on the Uchiha clan. However, this time, he could feel something else in Madara's chakra. Something similar to the sixth path powers. Kyorama couldn't help but feel anxious. 
How did he get his hands on the old man's powers? That chakra. Rinnegan. The Rinnegan is naturally stronger than the eternal Munjeku Sharingan, and if they can forcibly control him, the Rinnegan is not something he can fight. You must know that the power of the Sixth Paths is what made these Baijua, they were once the Juubi before Hagoromo split him into nine separate Baijua. Suddenly, Kyorama felt something weird and opened his eyes. At first glance, he saw Kushina in front of his cage, which made him a little surprised. Kyorama looked bored and annoyed to even deal with her problems today, and without even standing up, he turned his head and revealed horrible killing intent. Kushina. You came here again, are you gonna unlock the seal and let me out? If not, get lost, and don't bother me. Kushina seemed accustomed to Kyorama's threats, and especially after she got encouraged by Naito, she wasn't even afraid. She even laughed a little looking at the scary face he was having. Are you always this angry? Aren't you bored staying in this cage by yourself all day? Kushina kept looking at the Kyuubi with a smile, while the former was a little bit confused. This is wasn't like her. Whenever he called her before into this dimension, she would look scared and rushed to leave, but this time she came on her own and even mocked him. This is wasn't right, the Kyuubi felt like she was getting cocky and he should teach her a lesson before she gets used to this attitude. Raw. Suddenly the Kyuubi rushed to the cage and slammed it with his claws then roared so loudly. He was surging a massive amount of chakra along with terrifying and shocking momentum. However, Kushina didn't even react, the Kyuubi again looked confused, no matter how intimidating he was Kushina was just standing there with a smile. Sacring her became useless. Therefore the Kyuubi calmed down, then he snorted and said, Yes, it's very boring, do you want to come in and help? With inexplicable braveness, Kushina suddenly extended her arm and touched the Kyuubi's noise and said, Well, as long as you're obedient, I will let you go out whenever you want. The expression on the Kyuubi's face was indescribable, he looked like he's gonna explode at any moment. Obedient. What does she mean by obedient? I'm the Kyuubi. Well. You should tear that seal off first. The Kyuubi tried to calm himself down and take advantage of this situation. Kushina looked at the Kyuubi, and with a smile on her face, she tore the seal off. She tore it down. Down, and down. The Kyuubi, with an unbelievable look on his face, pushed the gate gently with his claws and the door between them suddenly opened. The Kyuubi has finally reacted, suddenly he jumped out with a pleasant expression. Did Kushina eat the wrong medicine today? Unlike the previous one, this time no one has forced the seal to get destroyed, moreover, this time he's conscious, and no one is trying to control him. He's finally free. Kyorama finally couldn't help but laugh and laugh loudly. Because he's a fox. His laughter was a little bit creepy, and Kushina couldn't help but sigh. Hey. Don't laugh like this. It's creepy. Kushina stared at the Kyuubi. The Kyuubi's laughter came to an abrupt end, then his whole body slammed down and leaned over toward Kushina with his head and stared at her with his scary eyes. Later, he put his claws against his chin, revealing a thoughtful expression. Hum since you freed me from my cage, I will give you a great deal, you get the right to pick which part of your body I should eat first. The purpose behind the existence of the Baijua's seal is to weaken them, once the seal is broken, there's no limitation to the Baijua's power. If the Jinshriki is not strong enough to suppress the Baijua inside them, the former will just eat their body and get out. Although Kushina wasn't afraid of the Kyuubi, the former was teasing her by putting his huge claws against her body.
Do you think frightening people is fun? Kushina was shocked by the Kyuubi's act and couldn't help but step back. The Kyuubi was observing Kushina's movements and the way she was talking and started to understand her intentions, he wasn't stupid after all. Do you think that if you let me out, I will listen to you and give you my powers? The Kyuubi didn't wait for Kushina's answer, and without any hesitation, he tried to catch her with his claws. Looking at this scene, Kushina took her fighting stance and was ready to fight the Kyuubi, suddenly, a figure flashed in front of her. Naito suddenly appeared in front of her and punched the Kyuubi's claws. Boom! The Kyuubi suddenly got pushed back with a shocked expression on his face. You Naito! Kushina also looked horrified, she didn't expect Naito to appear in this dimension. She thought that only a Jinshriki and his Baijua can enter it. Naito also didn't think he could come in, but the moment he put his hand on her seal, he figured out the way to go in, using his spiritual powers. You are. The Kiyuubi suddenly stopped the action and looked at Naito. Although he wasn't sure, the Kiyuubi felt that Naito was familiar. He had vague images in his head about someone who defeated him when Madara controlled him and made him attack the village. However, after he saw how Naito managed to stop his attack, he had no doubt that it was him. The Kiyuubi narrowed his eyes, then he exposed his killing intent. The time of playing is over, the Kiyuubi became serious. Because he understands now the reason behind unlocking his seal, perhaps these two want to get his power. How do you feel after you got controlled again by Madara? Naito appears and the way he talked, made Kushina somehow feel at ease and smile again, while the Kiyuubi looked angrier the moment he heard this sentence. How do you know? I know everything. Naito looked at the Kiyuubi with a calm expression. This is what he looked for Kushina, but for the Kyorama, the way Naito is looking at him was the same way Madara looked at him. Everything. You're too arrogant, human. The way Naito talked and looked at Kyorama, made the former really angry. There are things that a mere human like you can never know. The Kiyuubi's huge claws swayed, this time it was unlike the previous one when he wanted to catch Kushina, this time, he went for the kill. When his claws fell, the air burst and the ground shattered. You Naito. Kushina seemed frightened, looking at this scene. She had never seen the real power of the Kiyuubi before since she was unconscious when that accident happened. Now after she saw it with her own eyes and felt his horrible chakra, Kushina finally realized how much he can be terrifying. She couldn't help but feel worried, although she knew that Naito can defeat him, Kushina was still shocked by the Kiyuubi's power. It made it even harder for her to imagine how Naito managed to defeat him in the first place. Such a terrible force is not something that a human being can face. In the face of this attack, Naito's expression looked as calm as always, even if his horrible power can shake the mountains and cut the seas, it cannot make Naito's heart have the slightest movement. Even the strong wind of the fall didn't move Naito. The answer to this attack was straightforward. Under the gaze of Kushina, Naito's fist and the Kyuubi's claws collided. Boom! Suddenly. The whole place trembled, Naito's punch made the entire space around them unstable, and suddenly it broke. The size of Naito's fist to the Kyuubi's claws was like the difference between an ant to an elephant, but the power was the opposite. With his small fist, Naito managed to block the Kyuubi's claws. But this wasn't all, the shock force suddenly burst out and bombarded the Kyuubi's body. What? The Kiyuubi wasn't ready to lose this fight, suddenly he surged a terrifying amount of chakra and tried to fight back, but in the end, he still got bombarded. 
The Kyuubi looked shocked, he originally thought that Naito is gonna use a strong ninjutsu or fuinjutsu to suppress him while Kushina attacks him, but Naito didn't even look like he's trying he just punched him. This kind of strength is just like Madara and Hakirama. In the field. Naito looked really calm and focused, he didn't even do any meanless movements, it was as if he knew that one punch was enough. A fist that can bombard the Kyuubi, his power is just like a god. You're strong. But your attitude is really angering me. The Kyuubi stared coldly at Naito, the way he got humiliated made him became really mad. Suddenly Kyorama raised his head and roared. Whoosh. At this moment, the whole place started trembling as the Kyuubi's demonic chakra was surging, and constantly gathering and condensing on the top of his head turning into a huge dark Baiju Udama. This is the real Baiju Udama that Kyorama can form while he's awake and not controlled, it was big enough to be fired, but the Kyuubi didn't stop, and the Baiju Udama was getting bigger and bigger. Even Kushina widened her eyes, looking at this scene in shock. At this moment, she couldn't help but feel that she needs to interfere and launch her chakra chains toward the Kyuubi to stop his action. However, she looked at Naito to find that he seems like he didn't care, so she forcibly endured it, still, she couldn't help but feel worried. Can Naito stop such a terrible attack? Preparing a Baiju Udama can be fast, but in this situation, it was slow. The longer it takes, the easier it will be to interrupt. However, Naito didn't move an inch and looked calmly at the Kyuubi as the Baiju Udama was getting bigger. Suddenly, the Kyuubi roared and fired it toward Naito. This was an all-out attack. Only people like Hakirama and Madara, the successors of Ashura and Indra can stop such an attack, there's no chance for the others. The Kyuubi is really strong. Looking at the Baiju Udama flying toward him, Naito sighed softly, thinking about the huge difference between the Ichibi and the Kyuubi. Whoosh! At that moment, Naito injected his chakra into the golden ring on his finger, suddenly. It melted in the air and turned into two pairs of golden gauntlets. Without any hesitation, Naito clenched his fist then threw a punch at that huge Baiju Udama. Boom! Naito's punch didn't shatter or just crack the space like it always does, this one had a distortion effect on the space, a distortion that was visible to the naked eye. Suddenly, the huge Baiju Udama hit that distorted space and then there was a strange twist. At first, the Baiju Udama looked as if it hit a wall, as it was trying to force its way through it. However, it has never been able to break it, and all of a sudden, the Baiju Udama started to get smaller as if its power was getting sucked into that distorted space. And in just a second that huge Baiju Udama was gone. Kushina, who was standing beside Naito, looked shocked and speechless. The Kyuubi looked stunned he just witnessed his all-out attack get dissipated, helplessly, he started surging his chakra again, but obviously, the next attack will be weaker. It was a certain thing for him that Naito didn't have the sixth path's power in him, however, he was strong, the essence of his strength was above anything he ever saw. This is impossible. The Kyuubi stared at Naito, and said with amazement, How can you be this strong, you're obviously not. The successor of Indra and Ashura, right? Naito said this sentence calmly. Boom. This sentence had a greater impact on the Kyuubi's heart, even more than Naito's extreme power that he just witnessed. It even made his heart tremble. How did this human know about this. The Kyuubi looked extremely shocked, even the previous two successors of the Indra and Ashura didn't know. Knowing this information is extremely dangerous, does he seek that power? However, 
Naito's strength has entirely relied on the reverse Hakimon Tonku and his bloodline limit. When he first obtained it, the shock force wasn't this strong. To gain the power that can even defeat the Kyuubi, Naito worked hard to reach this level, it took him 10 years of practice. Bloodline doesn't mean everything, Guy didn't have any special talents, yet he managed to open the eight gates and go head to head with Madara. Although he had a special bloodline limit, Naito took the same path as Guy and Dai and worked hard, and finally, he put his hand on the power he sought. How do you know about Indra and Ashura? I know everything. The Kyuubi thought of Naito as an arrogant person, but after what he heard from him, he couldn't help but feel amazed. It was the first time for him to feel unfathomable around a human being. Even Madara couldn't make him feel this way, after all, it always goes back to the will of Indra and the Sixth Path's power. Let's stop this nonsense, Kyorama, you have two choices. It's either you keep this stubbornness of yours and eventually get controlled by Madara and end up sealed in the Jiyuubi, or stay with Kushina and help her. What Naito has just proposed is guaranteed full control of the Kyuubi's chakra to Kushina. Kyorama was his name, except Ugoromo and the other Baiju and no one knew about it. However, Naito has just called him by that name, which blew his mind. You Naito. Is the sixth path's old man have anything to do with this man? As for the Juubi thing that Naito has just mentioned, the Kyuubi knew about his existence, but he never understood Madara's intentions. However, now it all makes sense. And for the purpose behind the resurrection of the Juubi, Kyorama could fill in the blanks on his own, Madara wants to seal it in him and obtain the six paths Senjutsu. Staring at both Naito and Kushina, Kyorama slowly calmed down and said, and if I don't agree, I won't do a thing for you, and I won't force you to do anything, the same for Kushina, the choice is yours. I'm different from Madara, you're a living thing, and you have your own thoughts and will. I will not regard you as a war weapon. Naito's words made Kyorama speechless. This was unexpected for him, he thought that Naito would control him like everyone before he did. He never thought that a day would come where he will have the choice to choose by himself. Achiha Madara, Jiyuubi, Six Paths Senjutsu. These ideas were continually echoing in Kyorama's mind making his thoughts a mess. Kyorama stayed quiet for a long time, then he looked at Kushina, then said to Naito, let Kushina come over, I want to talk to her alone. No problem. Naito nodded at him, then he looked at Kushina with a smile and said, go talk to him. Okay. Kushina looked at Naito, then she gently responded, and walked toward Kyorama. As long as Naito is with her, she had no fear in her heart. Moreover, the Kyuubi wanted to talk to her, there's no doubt that he no longer look at her as an ordinary human being, but as an equal existence to him. There is no reason for humans and Juubi to be unequal. However, because the Baijua is so strong, humans are always in fear of them, feel like they need to seal them so they can be superior. However, Kushina didn't need that, Naito's existence alone is creating that balance. Naito didn't know what both of them were talking about. However, he wasn't worried. Suddenly, Kushina jumped on Kyorama's head then she started waving at Naito with a smile on her face. You Naito, I did it. You did nothing. And don't you start on looking down on me immediately. The Kyuubi didn't do anything to prevent her from staying on his head and snorted at her. Kushina patted Kyorama's head then smiled and said, Well, you don't need to scream every time, you will hurt my ears this way. Kyorama looked depressed, and he suddenly started to regret the whole thing, this girl is no longer scared of him. 
Looking at this scene, Naito smiled a little, he knew that Kyorama has already recognized Kushina. The relationship between them is no longer a Jinshiriki and his Baijua, it became a relationship between a friend and his companion. If the Baijua doesn't recognize the Jinshiriki, the former will never be able to control the Baijua's power perfectly. After the creation of this mutual recognition between Kushina and the Kyorama, Naito will no longer need to help Kushina in her training. In terms of controlling the Kyuubi's chakra, Kyorama is more experienced than Naito. The Mountains A golden figure was moving in the woods, and its speed looked incredible. It was Kushina, who has opened the Kyuubi chakra mode. This mode uses the Kyuubi's chakra to enhance speed, perception, and power, somewhat similar to the Sage mode. If you look closely, there's a residual flash of light next to her moving much faster than her. That figure is undoubtedly Naito. Both of them were continually flashing around the mountains. In the beginning, Naito and Kushina had a lot of spares, allowing her to control her new powers. However, Naito has never taken the intention to attack her. After that, Naito began to fight back to sharpen her perception and reactions. The sensing power of this mode is extremely powerful, even though it's slightly weaker than Naito's Ultra Perceive. Of course, Naito's attacks against Kushina couldn't be a fist, only a light touch on her with his fingers. Stop. After a few rounds, Kushina suddenly stopped with a blush on her face. Whoosh. Naito suddenly appeared in front of her, then shrugged at her and said, You're already tired. Tired of you. With an angry expression, Kushina said, What do you think you're touching? Naito couldn't help but smile and said, So what? What are you saying? Kyorama is watching. Kushina looked really embarrassed and couldn't help but to punch Naito on his chest. Yu Naito grabbed her fist and smiled, he's just a big fox. Kyorama heard that phrase and suddenly became angry, is he looking at me? Originally, Kushina was only a little bit embarrassed. However, the Kyuubi didn't like what he heard and proposed that the two of them should teach Naito a lesson so he doesn't look down on them anymore. All of a sudden, Kushina smirked and entered her red-hot-blooded habanero mode. Naito knew what was going on, and he himself felt like it was an excellent opportunity to show them that they will never be able to win against him. Next, with the help of Kyorama, Kushina entered the complete form of the Kyuubi and attacked Naito, but she got still suppressed by him. Even with Kyorama's help and her perfect control over Kyorama's chakra, Kushina couldn't win against Naito, even a tie was difficult. Which made Kyorama finally admit, that Naito is indeed powerful and outrageous. Naito asked Kyorama about the strongest between the wood dragon technique and Suzanu. Kyorama didn't answer directly, which made Naito more curious to know the answer. This technique is indeed a formidable technique that has been created by the first Hokage Hashirama Senju. However, a perfect Suzanu like the one Madara has, can counter that technique by draining its chakra with the Suzanu sword. Kyorama was a witness to the battle between the two of them, so he knew what he was talking about. He thinks that Naito can trounce the wood dragon technique. However, he still feels it will be difficult for him to win against the perfect Suzanu. In this regard, Naito wasn't surprised. He didn't think from the start that he can win against Madara with his current strength. However, Naito believes that after he reaches the second stage of the Sage Mode and opens the sixth gate of the reverse Hakimon Tonku, even the days when he thought of Hashirama as a superior won't last anymore. In addition, Naito had one more thing in his armor that can determine the battle, that is, the new Kusanagi weapon. 
When he first took out that sword, even Kyorama got extremely surprised. That weapon seemed almost stronger than treasured tools of the Sage of Six Paths. With this one, Naito's strength can reach a whole other level. Of course, after he opens the sixth gate, Naito will no longer be in need of that weapon, his body itself will be the strongest weapon in his armory. However, when Naito tried to give it to Kushina, the effect was even beyond his expectations. Kyorama Chakra is enormous and even stronger than Naito's, and it was perfect a match for the Kusanage I sword. With the use of this sword, along with activating the Kyuubi mode, Kushina's power can almost confront Naito. When she uses Tailed Beast mode, the weapon turns into a huge golden armor covering the surface of Kyuubi's body. Its defensive power is almost close to the one that Naruto and Sajuk used in the original. Naito has never thought that Kushina can become this strong. It was tough even for him to break through this strong defense. How strong is this defense? Even with a simple use of the shock force, Naito can smash a huge Baiju Udama barehanded. However, this distractive power of his can't even break through Kyorama's armor. The only thing that worked was condensing the shock force to a point, but even that didn't break through to Kyorama's body, it only crushed the armor. This result also proves the worth of the new Kusanage I weapon to be called an artifact. Of course, Naito didn't only have strength but also the incredible speed that gave him always the upper hand against Kushina. However, it's a fact that Naito cannot break through Kushina's defenses when she uses the Kusanage I golden armor. For more than a month. Kushina has only focused on controlling Kyorama's chakra and finally managed to fully master it. It's a tough task if she was forcibly trying to do it, but with the help of Kyorama and with both sides cooperating, it was much simpler. Naito has always handed Kushina his Kusanage I weapon when fighting against her. At this stage, even the Kyuubi is no more a challenge for Naito. It's difficult for him to feel any pressure if he uses his full power. However, with the use of the Kusanage I sword, the two of them can create some kind of pressure on Naito, and this disadvantage helped him practice more on his shock force. After that fierce battle against the third Rakage Naito's control over his shock force has become perfect, after he opened the fifth gate. It became really easy for him to condense and extend the shock force at will. During this month, Naito tried every way possible to break through Kushina's defense. However, no matter what he did, even when he condensed the power on the impact, was only crushing the armor. He has never managed to hurt Kyorama. Therefore, Naito thought of something new and expanded the power of the shock force directly after the impact. As a result, he forced a sudden change on the shock force, which grants him a wide explosive power after the impact. Now Naito is not limited to use one way from the other. One punch from him can now do both condensed and extended damage. Even Kyorama mode along with the Kusanage I golden armor cannot withstand the power of this attack. Of course, it's still for Naito to use this kind of technique with complete freedom, and it requires a lot of concentration and control mastery. Naito believes that after he opens the sixth gate, he will use this technique freely just like any usual punch. Boom. The roars were constantly echoing around the place, while Naito was flashing and flickering from a place to another punching Kyorama's armor constantly and ripping it off his body. Even urging his chakra quickly to regenerate, wasn't effective since he cannot keep to Naito's incredible speed. In the end, the fight was over by Kushina losing her chakra. She fell on the ground from exhaustion while raising both her thumps at Naito. As I figured I would never catch up with you Naito, your strength is always growing fast. In the beginning, 
Kushina could slightly suppress Naito and even counter-attack him when she has the chance, but once he figured out how to make that attack, she could no longer compete with that power. Naito lied down on the ground while he had some drops of sweat on his forehead. It might be true that he won, but it wasn't an easy task. When he heard Kushina, Naito suddenly showed a helpless expression. Who is the one growing fast? Although Naito has improved a lot in this month, it cannot even be compared to Kushina's growth, she directly surpassed the level of Akij. However, after she fully mastered the control of Kyorama's chakra, her growth rate has slowed down and become the same as Naito. Unless it's someone like Hashirama and Madara, even Nagato wouldn't be able to deal with the current Kushina. If she uses the golden armor, even he will not be considered as a worthy opponent. I've almost completely controlled Kyorama's chakra, where are we going next? Kushina still doesn't know how strong she is now, but no matter what is the case, the path was always clear in her mind, that is, to always stay by Naito's side. Naito has never liked the idea of being restrained by rules, he loved to be free, and he will never gain that freedom unless he's the strongest in the world. Let's see. How about we go to the rain? Naito walked to Kushina's side then he patted her shoulder, and said, During the war, I've trained two disciples, I've mentioned them to you before. Yes. Kushina nodded gently. It did matter really where the two of them were going because she will always follow Naito. The Hokage has managed to block all the information about Kushina and Naito's departure. However, Konoha was the center of the intention of the entire world, because of the Kyuubi's late accident. In this case, it was no longer possible to hide that information. After a month of investigating, all the other party's spies have confirmed that Konoha's Ashura and the Kyuubi's Jinshriki have left Konoha. After the hard blow that the Uchiha suffered, and the Kyuubi accident, the village has lost a massive part of its power, and the departure of Naito and Kushina added fuel to that fire. Although none of them could confirm if the village is considering Naito as Nukanin, the information they had was enough for them to understand that the relationship between Naito and the village has gotten worse. Konoha can no longer use Naito, and the former won't help even if they asked. As a result of the odds favors changing, the other villages have begun to move again. Konoha has gained a lot of new resources after the Second World War, which made it easy for the other village to take it back since they didn't have the power to guard it all. It wasn't a surprise since this is was the weakest period that Konoha has ever experienced. Also, the other four major villages will never give them the chance to recover. However, since they still feared that Naito would stand by Konoha's side, they didn't launch several attacks immediately. They began by testing them. Various ninja squads were dispatched to Konoha's borders and began to create friction deliberately. Once again, the world has sunk into chaos. Naito and Kushina who caused this situation didn't pay attention to what was happening in the world and went straight to Rain Village. Rain land. It has never changed, it was raining like always, and the dark clouds were covering the sky. The weather here is quite annoying. Kushina stretched her hand out, and the raindrops fell on her palms, she couldn't help but whisper those words with an annoyed expression. Suddenly, she activated Kyuubi's mode. Whoosh. In an instant, her body got covered by Kyorama's golden chakra which worked as an invisible barrier between her and the rain. The chakra was evaporating the raindrops before it even reaches her body. Looking at her, Naito couldn't help but smile, she looked like a child who got a new toy that he plays with it wherever he goes. The way Naito and Kushina were using was completely different. When the raindrops fall on Naito, it bounces off his body gently. However, 
the way that Kushina was using was more violent. The two of them kept walking in the rain without getting wet. Soon, the two of them reached a small town in the rain. After she deactivated Kyorama's mode, Kushina and Naito entered a tea house for a temporary rest. Even the taste of the tea is different from the one in Konoha. Looking at the rain outside, Kushina sat quietly next to Naito. Naito nodded while drinking his tea and using his Ultra Perceive like he always does. The Ultra Perceive is now even stronger than the Bakugan, it doesn't only see everything in the world, but it also has the ability to listen to the sounds, just like the perspective of the gods. After all, the waves caused by the transmission of the sound can be easily detected with his Ultra Perceive since its vibrations after all, and it doesn't really bother him since he could activate it at will. There weren't any ninjas from other villages in this small town, only some ordinary rain shinobis that weren't even worthy for him to keep an eye on them. However, when he was about to eliminate them for his perception, these Shinobis start a conversation that caught Naito's attention. There's no time for comfort. The world has once again become chaotic. A lot of Shinobis from other villages started wandering again in the Rain Village. The situation is not good. The question is, why doesn't Hansa Sama let us deal with those people and prevent them from roaming freely in our village? Because their true goal is not our village, they are only using us as a rest point. Moreover, isn't Hansa Sama currently dealing with the Akatsuki? The atmosphere instantly changed the moment he mentioned the Akatsuki. The other Shina Bee kept quiet for a long time, then he took a deep breath and said with a deep tone, In fact, I'm not against what the Akatsuki believes, it's a good cause to stop the war but they are too naive. War will stop at any time if the five major villages want it to stop, they are the ones who can decide, and if the Akatsuki try to do anything they will just crush them like ants. Except for those war freaks and madmen who like to kill and fight, no one wants war, even the ninjas themselves, because war means danger. If they want to stop the war, at least they shouldn't use the rain village to spread their voice to the world. This is threatening the lives of the innocent civilians in the village, and the status of Hansa Sama himself. Yeah, this time Hansa Sama himself has come out to organize the attack, but I don't know any more information about the situation, it should be a hit and run tactic. No one can win against the demigod Hansa Sama. Even the person who managed to kill the second Keizkij needed to join forces with other Shinobis to gain the upper hand. Several Shinobis nodded the moment they heard this sentence. It's a fact that these guys from the Akatsuki are strong, but Hanzo will always have the upper hand against them. At this moment, one of them suddenly stood up and walked to the window. After a while, he turned with a calm expression to the others and said, I just received the information, the Akatsuki got defeated. Hansa Sama is currently chasing the head of the Akatsuki organization to kill him. Sure enough. None of the other ninjas looked surprised when they heard this news since they already expected this result. The sky is always covered with dark clouds when it's raining in this land. In the tea house, Naito was holding his teacup close to his lips, preparing to taste it when he suddenly stopped moving. Later he changed his mind and put the cup on the table. Kushina looked strangely at Naito and was about to ask Naito if it was something wrong with it that didn't like, but he suddenly stood up. Go out and wait for me. Naito's expression looked calm, but the way he talked was somber. What happened? Kushina got surprised. She knew Naito very well, and he's never this calm unless the situation is hazardous. Whoosh. Without any more explanation, Naito flickered and disappeared. Except for Kushina, no one could notice Naito's speed, 
The people inside the tea house were just ordinary civilians, but even a Jonin wouldn't notice such a fast movement. Kushina stood up and walked to the door of the tea house looking for the direction Naito was moving with a confused expression. What on earth did happen? Not long after, a roar echoed in the distance of the town. Boom! A house suddenly crashed down, causing some disturbance in the town, while countless people gathered around it. At the same moment of that disturbing Naito suddenly appeared again in front of Kushina. Something urgent has come out. Naito went straight at her then said, I'll fill you up with the information while moving. Rain land. In a huge hilly area, the rain was falling as always washing the bloody ground. Kanan and Yuriko were moving under the rain while the blood was covering their bodies and shame all over their faces. Behind them, a team of the rain shine abyss was chasing them revealing their killing intent at them and staring at them with cold faces. Kanan and Yuriko didn't have any time to rest. After unstoppable battles, one after the other, the two of them were so tired and unable to fight back anymore. The people who followed Yuriko were either dead or escaping. Everyone knew that Hansa was after the leader who is Yuriko, so one person was left by his side, Kanan. The leader of the team who was chasing them was Hansa himself. In the rear, Hansa was followed by a great number of strong Shine Abyss to kill Yuriko and Kanan. Although they had the numbers and the power to surround the two of them, Hansa was still extremely cautious. He's just that kind leader, even if he could chase them using his speed he will never leave the side of his team and act alone. Looking at the rain Shine Abyss behind them, Yuriko's face was full of bitterness, he was gasping so hard, and looked like he almost reached his limit. Kanan, who is next to him, has also reached her limit, her physical strength and chakra are almost drained. Finally, the two of them got caught up by the rain shine abyss and got surrounded instantly, there was no way to escape. The rain continued on falling and the atmosphere became extremely suppressing. Kanan couldn't even stand straight anymore. Yuriko bit his lips as he was looking at the disdainful look Hansa was having. Why on earth are you even fighting us? It wasn't long time since Hansa has decided to eliminate the Akatsuki from the rain, the organization was working inside the rain village for months, and they never encountered any problems. However a few days ago Hansa launched an attack on them, which ended up with the death of several members from the Akatsuki, then the pursuit of Yuriko and the others for two days, which led them to this moment. Standing in the distance, Hansa didn't rush toward Yuriko, the moment he heard the former's words his face became really cold. Yuriko created the Akatsuki for the purpose of peace, however. After he managed to gather a lot of people around him, Hansa gradually started to feel threatened by his power. After the Second War, Hansa stayed hidden for a long time, which made Yuriko do as he pleases inside the village. However, if the Akatsuki grow any more stronger, wouldn't Yuriko become the leader of the Rain Village? Where does this leave Hansa as the true leader of the village? Finally, it became a must for Hansa to destroy the Akatsuki since he could no longer ignore them. Moreover, even the defeat of the Akatsuki and its destruction is not enough, the Akatsuki is Yuriko himself, if he's not dead, he will never be safe. Therefore, he couldn't show any mercy to him. Kill them. Hanzos kept staring at Yuriko but he never answered his question and ordered his team to attach him. With the intention of killing them, the rain shine abyss attacked. Whizzing. Countless shurikens and kunais were flying toward Yuriko and Kanan. Yuriko looked at this scene helplessly, he wanted to release any kind of ninjutsu to buy some time for them and find a way to escape, but his chakra was almost drained and his physical strength was exhausted. Moreover, even if he wins against these Shine Abyss, 
he will never be able to win against someone like Hansa, especially in this kind of state. Hansa is very strong, strong to the point of desperation. Even with numbers, they wouldn't be able to win against Hansa. The only man he knows that can defeat Hansa is Naito, and Yoriko knew that he would never surpass his sensei or even come near to his power. In the past few years, his sensei became too strong that he could even kill both the second Keizkiga and Reikage. In Yoriko's point of view, even if Naito fights alone against Hansa and his team, they will never be able to cause a scare on his body. Full of bitterness and despair Naito looked at the flying shurikens and kunais flying toward him. Sure enough, Sensei is right. I'm too naive. It's really difficult for people to understand each other. Although Hansa didn't answer his question, Yoriko wasn't a fool man. He knew then answer before even he even start this raid on them, Yoriko knew the cause and effect of his actions and was fine with it. It was all for a good cause. He was fine to die for that cause, but he asked because he just wanted Hansa's personal recognition. Yoriko wasn't interested in the village or being its leader, but Hansa couldn't understand that, and he believes that everyone is fighting for power. It's difficult for people to understand each other. Even if Yoriko tells Hansa that he doesn't care about power, the former wouldn't believe him. It's just like what happened to Naito, although he doesn't care about becoming a Hokage, Konoha couldn't believe it. If he weren't just too powerful for them to handle, they would have got rid of him from a long time ago or tried to control him. Is this the end? Next, to Yoriko. Kanan was looking at the flying shurikens and releases heading toward the two of them with a little bitterness in her heart. She would have done something if she could, but Kanan didn't have any chakra left, and she was barely standing still. Her heart has already sunk into despair. The only thing that she wanted the most before her death was to see her sensei's smile one more time. She wanted to see how proud he is of her and get his approval but now there's no chance for that to happen. At that moment, the time seemed to be stagnant and slowed down. They say when someone is about to die a series of scenes from his entire life flashes in his mind. However, what Kanan saw when those shurikens and releases were about to hit her, were scenes from the times they met Naito and lived together, maybe because it was the happiest time in her life. Suddenly, an invisible wave mark spread in front of her, it seemed to be a distortion of space. It was a shocking moment even for her to see all of those shurikens, kunais, and even releases frozen in midair right in front of her. This. This is. Kanan couldn't help but notice how familiar this technique was, which made her mind screaming, as her heartbeats started raising crazily. At first glance, she noticed a figure in the distance. She couldn't clearly see his face, but she didn't need to, she could recognize him from hundreds of men, it was Naito. Silence. The rain continued to fall. Suddenly, all the releases got shattered, and the shurikens and kunais were all turned to powder. All the rain shinobis looked shocked. However, before they could even react, they noticed another shocking thing in the distance. They saw Naito who was far away from the battlefield but only for a second, then he disappeared, to appear again in front of them. What is this speed? The speed was shocking enough for them to have cold sweat appearing on their forehead. They couldn't see Naito's face from that distance before, but now that he got so close, he seemed kind of familiar to them. Some of them could recognize his face, but they needed to double check first because if what they are seeing is true, they would be damned. Konoha's Ashura, you Naito. Why is he here? Moreover, why is he even saving these two? 
Just a few seconds after his arrival, another person in the distance with a strong chakra and breakneck speed suddenly appeared on the battlefield. It was Kushina. The situation on the battlefield suddenly changed, even Hansa who was standing in the rear, couldn't help but get shocked. You. You Naito-sensei. Kanan kept looking at Naito then Yoriko, she couldn't believe what she was seeing. She even doubted that she's still alive, maybe this is what they call the dream world after death. On the other side, Yoriko was also full of surprises. She's finally catching up. However, this time, you two got yourselves into a hazardous situation. Naito also couldn't reach the battlefield at the right time even though he's faster than Kushina when it was too late for him. He just sent a shock wave to stop the enemy's attack. Kanan didn't care about all these details, she got what she wanted, Kanan has finally seen Sensei's face again. At that moment, she lost any more power she got in her and fell from exhaustion. Kanan. Yoriko, who was still conscious enough couldn't help but exclaim the moment he saw her falling on the ground showing a worried expression. Naito who was next to her, saw her falling and before she reaches the ground he reached out and caught her, and slightly sensed her, he knew that she was just exhausted, and she didn't suffer any severe injuries. She's fine, she's just exhausted and needs to rest. Naito nodded at Yoriko, then he lifted Kanan up and handed her to Kushina. Take care of her. I will take care of the others. Okay. Kushina nodded and took over Kanan, but she couldn't help that something wrong was with this girl. Although she was just a disciple of Naito, she looked differently at him. Yoriko's gaze also shifted to Kushina, who was taking care of Kanan and couldn't help but to reveal his surprise. The speed this girl has just used is enough to kill him in an instant. She looks the same age as Kanan but stronger and outrageous. I don't know what the relationship between her and Naito-sensei is, but she's definitely not his disciple. In the field. The rain continued to fall, and the atmosphere not only did not cease with the appearance of Naito, but it also became more horrible. The rain Shinobis clothes were getting soaked by the cold sweat. They didn't want to fight against someone like Naito. They were all stepping back and retreating to Hansa's side. Naito is very strong, but they also have a demigod by their side. Although no one has seen it, Hansa has also defeated the former Kidge of the Rain. Naito is not the only one who managed to kill a Kidge before. Even if it's Konoha's Ashura, as long as they have Hansa the Salamander by their side, they are not afraid. Yoriko cleared his mind from the shock of seeing Kushina's speed and focused on the situation on the battlefield, then he stared at Hansa. These ordinary Shinobis won't be a threat to Naito. The only danger is Hansa, who is also a respected man with the nickname of a demigod. Naito-sensei has killed the third Reikage and Keizkage. His strength has definitely increased a lot. But the last time he fought against Hansa, he needed to join forces with three legendary Sanin to defeat him. But this time it's only Naito Sensei against him. However, fortunately, Naito Sensei has brought with him this girl, she looks powerful, if she joins the fight with him, they will definitely defeat Hansa. With this thought in his mind, Yoriko immediately walked toward Kushina to take her place so she could tag in. However, Naito suddenly stepped forward and walked towards Hansa. Seeing this scene, Yoriko got a little bit surprised. Naito-sensei. He kept walking toward Hansa, step by step, while his eyes were focused only on one target. Naito was walking toward the canyon that was separating him from reaching Hansa. However, the surrounding rock walls of that canyon weren't that high, they were only 10 meters. What is your relationship with these two? 
Hansa sighted and looked at Naito, with a hint of envy in his eyes. He knew that the current Naito is not that brat from before who needed Orochimaru to tag in to have a chance with him. He killed the third Kaze Kitch, the third Rei Kitch, and not a while ago he managed to suppress the Kyuubi on his own. Undoubtedly, the current Naito is powerful, and Hanzo wouldn't have the slightest chance of victory against him. They're my two disciples, and it seems you've caused them some trouble. Naito replied without revealing any killing intent, actually, his tone had a very casual feeling, which made Hanza even more uncomfortable. Looking at Naito who was getting close to him, Hanza became more vigilant and was ready to shoot at any moment. So they're your disciples, then what do you want? It seems that you've grown anxious from their power, so you've decided to kill them, just like that. Do you think you're gonna walk from this alive after what you did? I think you need to compensate for the damages you did to my disciples. Naito paused a little and said in an understatement, your compensation will be handing over the rain village to me. This sentence made everyone stunned and wonder if something wrong was with their ears. You Naito. What are you talking about? Hansa has also looked shocked. Then his face suddenly revealed his anger, and with a cold look on his face, he stared at him and said, Hand over the rain village. Do you think you're strong enough to let me surrender the village to you, you're thousands of years younger? What a joke. Listening to Hansa's answer, Naito finally stopped walking, then he calmly looked at him. Since you don't want to hand over the village peacefully, then... How about you fight against me for it? Naito looked at Hansa then shrugged his hands and said, As long as you stop me right here right now, everything will be fine right? This sentence made the rain shine abyss feel really awkward, from where his confidence is coming. The two men are respected shine abyss which people call demigods. The two are very strong, but how can he be this confident? Keeping this thought in their minds, even the two men shouldn't be sure about their victory. In the rear, Yariko got stunned a bit, but then he understood that this was just a trick that Naito has pulled out so both sides will only retreat without any further casualties. Thinking of this even further, Yariko felt that this was the right answer, Kanan and Yariko are just Naito's disciples, and he doesn't really believe in their cause. It's only natural that he doesn't want to fight someone like Hansa for them. The only person who was handling this situation normally was Kushina. At this time, she was blinking, and her eyes were glowing with excitement, she was really interested in watching an older generation like Hansa fighting. This guy. He might be able to make Naito fight seriously. Kushina was very confident in Naito's strength, even Kyorama confirmed to her that his current power is very close to the Rakuta Senin. He might have fought with Naito before, but the only thing he knows about him is his earthquake release. However, that trick only is not enough to kill a man like the third Rakage, now that several years have passed since their last fight, Naito's power should have increased, otherwise he wouldn't manage to kill the third case Kitch. In his view, as long as he can block Naito's attacks, even if he couldn't do any damage to him, the two will just be forced to stop the fight and retreat. In this case, let this old man see how much you have grown since the last time. Hansa didn't order any of the other Shine Abyss to help him with the fight. He knew that numbers don't mean much to someone like Naito. Regarding the way Hansa acted, the rain shine abyss fell back a few steps and looked at Hansa who has stepped in to face Naito, showing a hint of awe. The two are called demigods, but which one is stronger? Hansa Summer is stronger. Although he's strong, you Naito is still very young, he's no match for Hansa Summer. You Naito could notice the rain shine abyss retreating, but he was lazy to stop them.
After they've entirely fallen back behind Hansa, Naito said. Are you ready? Humph. Hansa stared at him and revealed his killing intent, obviously, this is was like an understatement of the beginning of the fight. Naito is not the only one who became stronger in these past years, from today on, the world will only know one person with the nickname of a demigod. For Yuriko and the other Shinobis were looking at the battlefield, Naito looked a little bit off to them. No one will ask an enemy if he's ready, it seemed like a teacher guiding his own students. This is not how you treat a life and death battle. Looking at the expression on Hansa's face, Naito slowly retracted his hand back, then he gently clenched it and swung it out at Hansa from a distance. The scene looked weird, no one understood what Naito was doing, is he taking a fighting stance? Maybe he's just stretching his body. But even this doesn't make sense. Perhaps he's just afraid of Hansa. No one understood his intention, but they were sure that this wasn't an attack. However, the moment he entirely waved that punch everything changed. Whoosh! At that very moment, heaven and earth looked like they crushed on each other, the ground started trembling violently, and the thick black clouds in the sky fluttered like a huge vortex. When that fist fell, a strange distortion appeared on the empty space in front of him. It looked as if Naito has broken the space with his punch. This is was the punch he learned in his fight against Kushina, the condensed shock wave. Space started to crack violently and slowly and all of a sudden, it spread quickly along with an intense burst of air. It may look slow at the beginning but the speed it has reached after that cannot even be followed by the naked eyes. The moment Naito started moving, Hansa has already reacted quickly and did a hand sign using his both hands. He knew that Naito's attacking power is extreme, so he decided to use an A-class Earth release to block it, this is will grant him a few seconds to fall back and counter-attack him with another offensive A-class fire release that he will never be able to avoid. However, the moment that punch fell, Hansa knew that his whole planning was for nothing. An A-class Earth release. It got shattered in an instant against this enormous power. An A-class fire release. He didn't have time to do its hand signs. He doesn't even have time to blink his eyes. The speed of the wave spreading won't give him time even to escape from it. In just one second, the waves reached and destroyed the A-class Earth release then penetrated through Hansa's body then swayed to the Shinobis in the rear through the canyon. The horror and stunning look in Hansa's eyelids were indescribable. At that moment, his consciousness went blank. He has lost even the ability to think, and there was nothing in his heart but panic. The expression on Shinobi's faces at the rear was stagnated. Shocked, frightened, desperate, horrified. All of these emotions were fighting each other to show up on their faces. However, there was no time for them to express all of these feelings. Silence. Suddenly. The whole front of Naito at a distance turned into aches including Hansa, the rain shine abyss, the rock walls, the canyon, and even half of the forest behind them. The whole place turned into a big deep hole. It seemed as if the gods have smitten them. One punch, destroyed the whole place. Whether it's the rain shine abyss, Hansa the salamander, the green, or even the dry, under the power of this punch, they are all gone. The god of Shinobis, and the demigod, the two nicknames might seem strong, but the difference in terms of strength between the two persons is like the gap between heaven and earth. The man who has been called the god of Shinobis before, ended the war with his hands, created Konoha, changed the environment of the whole fire land creating living forests around it, and had the power to divide the resources between the five major villages. That existing of that man was the foundation of this world itself. 
Hamza cannot face that level of power, he cannot even have the slightest resistance against it, even if he chose to escape, he wouldn't be able to do it. Even though Naito cannot compare himself to that man yet, but the people gave him the same nickname as Hashirama, and this punch was proof of his worthiness. Yoriko at the rear couldn't help but blink his eyes with an incredible look on his face. How did this happen? A punch that has the power to destroy the whole place. What a force. This destroyed any old impression Yoriko had on his sensei, the old Naito he knew cannot even be compared to Naito today. This a little bit too much. Even if she knew how much he's strong. Kushina looked a little bit shocked. She didn't expect him to use such a power against weak flies. Moreover, he just destroyed the canyon that the people in here used to cross over toward the forest. Fortunately, there was another canyon far in the distance that they can use instead of this one. He's a demigod, you cannot hold out your strength against someone like that. Naito turned around and looked at Naito. Then he chuckled. Kushina showed a helpless expression. Naito was clearly mocking Hansa and questioning his worth for a nickname like a demigold. Hansa cannot be compared to someone like Naito. In Kushina's view, the only man who can be called the god of Shinobis after Hashirama is Naito. After all, he's the only man with the capability to destroy a whole country with his strength. Only a man like that can be called the god of Shinobis. Kanan woke up after a while, but she was still a little weak. She could recover quickly because Kushina was injecting the Kyuubi's chakra in her, this method was helping strengthen Kanan's recoverability. Kyorama's chakra is strong enough to be used even on other people. Kanan could feel her body condition getting better, she knew that Kushina was helping her. Therefore, Kanan showed a grateful expression at her. Thank you. You're welcome. After she rechecked her condition and made sure that she could stand on her own, Kushina let go of her and smiled. At this time, Kanan raised her head then she took a look at the battlefield, the moment she noticed the changes that occurred in the place she showed a horrified expression. Did something happen? She immediately gazed her eyelids toward Yoriko, who was still in shock, looking at Naito. Could it be that? Kanan, that's right, Naito-sensei, has saved us and killed Hanza. Yoriko could notice the shock on Kanan's face, and he immediately explained to her the situation. However, Yoriko, who was trying to explain to her what happened, was still in disbelief. He couldn't merely recover after what Naito did. Hansa the Salamander. Died. Listening to Yoriko's explanation made Kanan more shocked. Yeah, he got killed by Naito-sensei. This damage that occurred on the battlefield was caused by Sensei's technique. I didn't expect Sensei to be this strong. He didn't even give Hansa a chance to attack. Yoriko said this with a trace of both awe and admiration in his tone. His word confirmed the speculations in Kanan's heart, Naito was the cause of this horrifying scene. Kanan fell into a big shock, which made her say no more words for a long time. On the other side, the shock in his heart gradually dissipated. Yoriko revealed a bitter expression looking at Naito, then he said, Sensei, I failed you. Like you've just said to me before, I'm too naive. If you didn't come at the right time, I would have been. Thinking about that possibility made Yoriko feel horrified. Hansa would have definitely killed them without showing the slightest mercy. You're really naive, but you would have survived even if I didn't show up, I didn't train you guys to die in this place. This sentence made Yoriko feel stunned. Even Kanan felt surprised, this sentence didn't make any sense, Naito talked about their fate with such certainty that only gods can have. The only person who didn't look surprised was Kushina. 
Naito turned and looked at Kushina, then he gently nodded and said, Can you feel it? Yes. Kushina blinked then turned to look in a specific direction. When she's in the Kyuubi's mode, Kushina's sensing power becomes very strong. Kushina has just felt an extremely powerful chakra flow, and it was as strong as her. Moreover, it was very close. Kanan and Yariko looked at Naito and Kushina and wanted to ask, however, they could notice that both of them were looking in the same direction behind the canyon. Don't hide, come out. Naito said this sentence with a very calm tone, however, his voice could reach the person who was hiding behind that canyon. Suddenly, a figure appeared, then he jumped above the big hole Naito has created, then step by step, he came in front of Naito and the others. Yoriko and Kanan felt a bit surprised. Did someone was hiding in the dark? Rinnegan. Impossible. Nagato's eyes. Although it has been years since they met Nagato, the two of them have never forgotten about him nor about the Rinnegan. Compared to them, it was the first time for Kushina to see the Rinnegan. And she couldn't help but notice the strong aura around the guy who was covered with black receivers around his whole body. This aura has even made Kyorama lightly feel its pressure. This is... Rinnegan. Kyorama opened his eyes, and with a stunned expression, he said, the old man's eyes have appeared. What Naito has told me was really true. Taking a deep breath, Kyorama sighed and said to Kushina, beware of those eyes, he's very dangerous. Okay. Kushina nodded firmly. Throughout the whole situation, only Naito was still calm. Although the one who was in front of him was a complete stranger to him, he kept his calm expression as he was looking at him. Naito has already felt his presence the moment he put his feet in this place. Regarding the fact the person who was using Rinnegan wasn't Nagato, Naito didn't get surprised because he was familiar with it. Six Paths of Pain it's an outer path technique that allows a Rinnegan user to manipulate up to six bodies as though they are their own. The user embeds one or more black receivers into a body, allowing them to channel their chakra into it from great distances. Each body has its unique techniques that the user himself can choose. In the original, Nagato chose Yariko's body to use Prata Path. Unexpectedly, it seems that Nagato has already mastered this technique in this timeline. However, there's only one pain in here. Naito couldn't sense any other bodies around the place using his Ultra Perceive. A god, only a divine existence, can be called one. Look for yourself. Hansa, who has been called a demigod once, has just been killed in nowhere by a mortal just like him. Walking toward Naito, Payne said with a calm expression. At that moment, Yariko couldn't help but step forward and ask, Who are you? Why do you have Nagato's eyes? Payne looked at him then said, I'm Payne, if you call this man by your side a demigod, then I'm the god himself. Naito quietly kept looking at Payne, but the color in his eyelids was showing his interest. Naito was more curious about where did Nagato has disappeared for this whole time, where he went, and what he was doing. And from the way the six paths of pain has suddenly appeared, Naito could estimate that this Nagato was no different from the one in the original. In the original his character has changed after the death of Yoriko, the former wanted to be the god of the world. Nagato granted him that by claiming himself as God using Yoriko's body as one of Pain's six paths. Just when Yoriko has frowned and wanted to ask him again, Naito suddenly spoke. This is the six path of Pain technique it allows the user to manipulate up to six bodies as though they are their own. Every single one has its special unique ability. But I don't know which one is this. 
Naito's sentence made pain who looked very calm reveals a shocked expression, he immediately stared at Naito with a hint of disbelief. How do you know about this? He has never told anyone about this ability. Nagato has been hiding in the dark for years, and this is was the first time he shows up. However, his ability has been exposed directly by Naito. The shock was really evident in his eyelids, he already knew about Naito and was keeping an eye on him the whole time, but Naito's knowledge was far more terrible than what he imagined. He got really stunned when he previously saw how Naito destroyed Hansa and his army with one punch, regardless of his shock, he didn't feel like he needed to expose his identity and immediately deal with him. There only one pain nearby the other fives are not here, or maybe he still didn't create them. However, Nagato himself is not here, he's far away from this place. Still, he could control him from such a long distance. Naito looked amazed as he was looking at pain. However, the weight of every sentence he has said was like a hammer smashing Nagato every time. The things Naito knew were enough for him to feel threatened which made him couldn't help but step back. On the other side, Yuriko and Kanan felt amazed, and they couldn't help but look at Naito and Pain. Although she knew that Naito was handling the situation, Kushina couldn't lose her guard and was standing next to Yuriko and Kanan ready to attack. Pain's expression became colder, and after a long time, he finally calmed down. Sure enough, you're not a simple man, as I thought. This is the meaning of being powerful, with such a confidant in his strength, Nagato wasn't afraid even from Naito. He's the man who has been able to control the Rinnegan, he's the man who has become the new god of the world. However, just a few words from Naito made him understand that the former know everything about him, and on the other side, Nagato did know nothing about him. What do you seek? What is your purpose for showing up here today? I feel that you wouldn't move an inch if those two got just killed by Hansa. Naito said these words to Nagato. Naito was trying to reach out to Nagato without revealing how much he knew about Madara and his plan. Naito didn't know what the former will try to do if he felt anything suspicious. Therefore, he was trying to act calm around him. I've wanted to see something, and I've seen it. What did you want to see? Nagato. Knowing that this guy was controlled by Nagato, Yuriko couldn't help but scream at him. Although, he knew that this Nagato wasn't the one he saved several years ago. Such confidence and arrogance, it's almost as if he's a whole different person. I'm a god, and a god must always keep an eye on the world. Naito didn't know where was Nagato hiding, the place he has chosen was beyond Naito's ultra-perceived reach. Have you been watching us this whole time? Yuriko looked surprised the moment he heard that sentence, Kanan, on the other side, seemed really sad. No wonder that she has always felt like being watched from the dark. Nagato has been secretly spying on Yuriko and Kanan and watching the Akatsuki organization gradually growing big, and noticing how Hansa was trying to take them down made him take a move. Yes. Payne nodded then said, For a long time I kept thinking about the right way to look at this world, I've wanted to observe it from your perspective, but it seems you have completely failed, Yuriko. Yuriko clenched his fist at that moment, his expression changed, and he looked like he wanted to say something, but he finally showed a hint of sorrow then sighed. Indeed, even if he wanted to say something, nothing he would say would have proven the opposite, from the moment Hansa has suddenly hit the Akatsuki organization and collapsed, he basically failed, which demonstrates that his idea was wrong. I believe in the same cause as you, I wish for the wars to stop. However, it seems that it's impossible for people to understand each other. Therefore, it's time for me to try my method. With a firm expression, 
Payne looked at Yoriko and Kanan. Yoriko's brow wrinkled and couldn't help but ask, what method? This world shall feel pain, think about pain, and accept pain. Payne paused for a moment then continued, there is no peace in this cursed world. War is just a crime paid for by the pain of the defeated. Only if this world understands the true pain, it will be able to know peace. And to do this, I will collect all the Baijua and make the strongest weapon that will have the power to destroy the whole world. The greater the pain, the more they will feel afraid, thus, the world will restrain the idea of war and welcome peace. The way Pain has explained what he called a method made both Yoriko and Kanan feel terrified, but neither of them knew what to say back to him. Yoriko's idea of stopping the war has completely failed. The raid Hansa has done on him proved that his approach was wrong, and people will never understand each other, Yoriko was too naive. But Nagato's idea was too exaggerated. So this is. Your method. Kushina couldn't help but stare at him the moment he mentioned the Baijua. When he heard Kushina, Payne turned his head and looked at Kushina. All of a sudden, his eyes flashed slightly, and said, I will eventually need the Kyuubi to create my final weapon. However, I never expected to encounter the Jinshriki of the Kyuubi in here. Although the order is kinda off, I think it's time to start. The moment she heard that sentence, Kushina's body suddenly got covered by a yellow coat around it opening Kyorama's mode. Bring it on. At the same moment, Payne stared at her, and suddenly, a strong aura broke out, causing pressure on everyone around him. This kind of horrible pressure was far stronger than Hansa. This is wasn't the same kid from before, Nagato now can control the power of the Rinnegan, and he even managed to use the six paths of pain technique. Suddenly, pain stretched out his arm in front of him, and an invisible power blasted out shattering even the ground around him. Shinra Tensia. Boom. The ground under his feet suddenly cracked as the horrible force continued to expand. This invisible force shattered even the rain in the sky. Not good. Kushina wanted to fight back. However, she could tell that the situation was dangerous on Yoriko and Kanan who were by her side. Thus she directly grabbed both of them and fell back quickly. Her speed in the Kyuubi mode was furiously fast, however, it wasn't enough to escape from the Shinra Tensia range. Suddenly, Huge claws of chakra extended out of her body and used them to leap forward until she finally escaped the scope of the Shinra Tensia technique. The power of the Rinnegan is really terrible. Kushina looked stunned by the power of this technique, even Yoriko and Kanan were shocked, they never knew that the Rinnegan was this powerful. Moreover, he was trying to kill them, obviously, he wasn't considering them as his friends anymore. Boom. Kushina who could barely escape the range of this attack, then she immediately turned around to look for Naito. However, she got surprised when she found that Naito didn't move an inch from his place, even though with his speed, he could easily escape. Suddenly the force of the Shinra Tensia reached him. The horrible power blasted out, and a big crack appeared in the space in front of him. Naito had created a protective cloak around his body with the shock force when the two forces collided the ground under his feet suddenly got smashed. This was the second time he fights with the Rinnegan, however, the result this time was completely different. Currently, his shock force is at the fifth stage, and it's only a matter of time before it reaches the sixth. He's now much stronger than before. The two forces crushed on each other, however, Naito didn't even move a step, he didn't even raise his hand to block that attack, all that he did was staring at it. Nagato. Naito looked at the Shinra Tensia, then he whispered with a cold tone. Whoosh. 
Suddenly a dark, horrifying aura appeared around Naito's body cancelling the Shinra Tensia technique and blasting the whole place around him. This is wasn't the spiritual shock technique, this was just Naito's presence. His momentum alone has caused the rain to shatter, and the ground to crack. The weather itself seemed to change, it was getting colder. It seemed as if it has dropped a few degrees in an instant, and it didn't look like it's gonna stop before it freezes the sea itself. Peace is good. War isn't worth the suffering of the people. I don't really care if you want to bring peace or make the world feel the pain, I don't care about any of this rubbish. But who do you think you are to talk about the Kiyuubi in front of me? Don't dare to even think about it. Naito didn't care about war nor about peace. He's not a saint, he's not a hero, and he doesn't even care about other people. Do whatever you want, but don't you ever dare to touch a hair of Kushina's head. It seems that you care about the Kiyuubi. Pain looked again at Kushina. Then he said, maybe you care more about the Jinshriki of the Kiyuubi. Nagato knew that Naito is strong, he's no ordinary ninja. Therefore, he wasn't willing to hold back against him. He decided to use his strongest technique and finish him quickly. Sometimes you must hurt in order to know, fall in order to grow, lose in order to gain because life's greatest lessons are learned through pain. I think it's time for me to shut that big mouth of yours. Full power. Shinra Tensia. Nagato suddenly reached out with his hands, then he released a stronger Shinra Tensia, that directly made the ground collapse, the rain shatter, and let the whole place around him tremble. Kushina who have already escaped from the first one didn't hesitate to grab Yuriko and Kanan again then retreat. At the same time, she also looked worried. The power of the Rinnegan was obviously strong. This technique. It's simply outrageous. The scope of the attack this time has covered the whole place around them, reaching the forest in the rear. In the face of this outrageous power, Naito stared at Nagato then he suddenly injected his chakra into his golden ring. Whoosh. Suddenly the golden ring changed its shape then turned into a golden sword that he immediately held in his hand and waved it. Silence. The air burst out with some kind of distortions in space the moment the two forces collided. The Shinra Tensia force spread out in all directions, shattering and destroying everything in front of it. However, no defensive technique can withstand Naito's shockwave's power. In an instant, the moment the two forces collided, the shock wave split the Shinra Tensia and shattered it, then it kept flying toward pain. However, he couldn't help but feel shocked. This is impossible. Nagato couldn't hide his shock, after all, this is wasn't an ordinary technique, he just put his whole chakra into that Shinra Tensia. It was his ultimate ninjutsu, it could easily destroy an entire village, however, it got cut by Naito's sword. This is ridiculous. He was the man who obtained the Rinnegan, he had the strength of the Rakuda, the strength of a god, yet he got overwhelmed by Naito's power. You can't help but wonder how strong is Naito's shock force will be if he uses it with the new Kusanagi sword. Even Naito cannot answer this question, because up until now there was nothing it touched and didn't turn into ashes instantly. This time, it didn't encounter an ordinary ninjutsu. It was a full force Shinra Tensia. However, the result was the same, it cut right through it instantly. After the wave crossed Pain's body, it continued to fly shattering the rain all over the sky. Finally, after it reached the highest point in the sky, it split its darkest clouds. To those who witnessed this event that day, it looked for a moment as if it split the sky. Suddenly, a ray of light passed through that crack and illumined the ground. For the first time in hundreds of years, 
the sun rays fall directly on the rain land, and in a moment it became a sunny day. The sun fell straight on Payne's body, and his shadow got reflected on the ground. The shadow stagnated there, then finally disappeared silently into two halves, as his body got split then fall on the muddy ground. In a farm mountain, Nagato opened his eyes, with stunning traces in his eyelids. The cold sweat was evident on his forehead, as he found it really difficult for him to calm down for a long time. My full force Shinra Tensia got easily defeated, how could this happen? Even my Rinnegan couldn't. Nagato was hardly gasping, although he was just controlling Payne's body, that scene couldn't leave his mind. The feeling of being split by that enormous power was hard to forget. Nagato was afraid that Naito will appear in front of him at any moment with that golden sword in his hand cut his head off. That thought made him terrified for a long time. After a while, Nagato finally managed to settle his emotions. In this situation, it's difficult to catch the Kyuubi unless I use my strongest card. Wait, Nagato, if you want to deal with him. We will need to put a long-term plan and hit him hard when he least expect it. Just when Nagato was about to go for a second round, Zetsu drilled out of the ground in front of him. Nagato once again remembered that sword, and finally took a deep breath and nodded. Yes, we will need a plan, he seems like he doesn't believe in my cause, nor a person who pursues peace, which is very confusing. Black Zetsu didn't reply, even the former didn't believe in his cause, he was just a part of Madara's plan, he was completely using him as a puppet in his hand. Nagato will never be able to get the Kyuubi because he will need to deal with Naito first. His plan will fail. Nagato is just too naive. Even the man he was working for wasn't someone who pursue peace and only cares about himself but he's just too blind to see that. Zetsu glanced at the crack in the sky with profound awe in his eyelids, even he became somewhat afraid of Naito. That scene where the sun was shining on the rain land made the entire country, ninjas or even civilians, stop wherever they were doing. Everyone was shocked. What is that crack in the sky? Is that sun? That thing has never been seen for hundreds of years. Other gods has finally forgiven us for our sins and gave us a sunny day. However, as the crack in the cloud gradually closed, the sun rays continued to fade away, and finally disappeared altogether. Making those people wake up from their dreams. But they will never forget that scene. Every time they thought about that crack, they felt more shocked. Directly below that crack in the sky. Naito looked at the sky, then he shook his head, he didn't seem surprised, his shock force has reached an extreme level. Even the Shinra Tensia can no longer be compared to his power, soon when it reaches its maximum potential, nothing will ever be able to stand in front of him. After he got rid of pain, Naito flashed directly and roamed around the place for a while. However, he couldn't find Nagato in any place. Unless his ultra-perceive scope is much larger, he will never be able to find him. Soon, the range of the ultra-perceive will improve. However, I'm more focused on improving my strength. After he failed to find Nagato, Naito returned to Kushina and the others, while sensing the situation in his body. Naito's body was close to blending the whole natural energy he gathered before in Mount Myobaku. It's been two months since he left, and he will need to go back again soon after one other month. The cultivation of the second stage of the Sage Mode is almost one-third completed. Naito expects that the cultivation will be finished after repeating this process two times, and no more than three times. Once he opens the sixth gate, as long as he doesn't seal the Juubi in his body, even Madara will not be a threat to Naito. However, 
as long as he's around, nor Nagato nor Madara will be able to get the Juubi. This sudden attack of Nagato made Naito angry, he didn't want to interfere with them. However, after they came for the trouble they can't blame but themselves. They won't stay hidden forever, they will try to catch some Baijua, that's good, let's see who will catch more. Naito was lazy to get out and look for Nagato and Madara, but he found out that he doesn't even need to take the initiative to find them. If they want to collect all the Baijua, they will eventually come to find him. Looking at the cracked sky gradually healing, Yariko and Kanan slowly woke up from their shock, with a look of both awe and admiration on their faces. Especially Kanan, who looked really confused. After a while, they finally reacted and expressed their gratitude to Kushina again. It's normal for their sensei to save them, but Kushina didn't know them, yet she healed Kanan, and when they got attacked by pain, she saved them several times. You're welcome, I will check on your condition again later. Kushina smiled at both of them, but Yariko kept looking at her for a while after that. She helped them but he couldn't help but have doubts about her. Why is she helping us in the first place? And why is she with Naito-sensei? Kanan was also wondering about that. But she didn't hesitate to ask Kushina directly. Although she's looked the same age as her, they didn't look alike. However, Kanan could tell that she wasn't a bad person. Even if she didn't answer her, Kanan would have figured it out later from the way they treat each other. Therefore, Kushina leaned over toward her and whispered to her the relationship between her and Naito. Kanan snorted and couldn't help but envy her. At the same time, Naito's flashed from a distance and appeared in front of them. Did you find him? Sensei you didn't kill him, right? Yariko looked at Naito and couldn't help but ask. Kanan, who was by his side, has also looked worried. Although Nagato has completely changed, the three of them shared the same roof for a while, and they still cared about him. I couldn't find him. Naito shook his head, then looked at both of them, then at Kushina, and smiled, well, it seems you're already getting along, so I don't really need to introduce her. Yes. Both of them nodded, Yoriko didn't show any kind of expressions, but Kanan's eyes flashed slightly, and kept looking at the two of them. Naito could notice that. In fact, he could notice it from a while ago, how could he not feel it, Kanan has always treated him differently, she certainly doesn't only see him as a teacher. However, Naito acted like he didn't know about any of this. He felt this way he will prevent causing a lot of troubles from both sides. Naito looked at Yoriko and Kanan, then said, Hansa is dead now, the rain village has no leader. And it's estimated that it won't have one for a while. A new leader will not likely to be accepted by the people. After Hansa's death, the rain village will either fall into the turmoil of war, or it may be directly annexed by other parties. Naito paused a little and noticed the expression on Yoriko and Kanan changes, then he slowly said, so what will you choose, will you leave with me, or? Yoriko looked at Naito with a confused expression. If he asked him before, he would have definitely said with confidence that he would stay and become the new leader of the Rain Village and lead the world to peace. However, he's not that guy anymore, he suffered a lot and he has lost his belief. In the end, after he bit his teeth, he said to Naito, Naito-sensei. You should lead the rain village. Naito got surprised, he never expected him to say such a thing. He couldn't help but smile lightly and say, I'm an outsider. But Naito-sensei is not also a ninja from Konoha. Sensei, you're from the Kusanagi clan. Your village has been destroyed. Yoriko stopped then looked at Naito with hints of hope and pleading. As long as Naito is the next leader, 
the village will surpass that turmoil in an instant, and the five major villages will never dare to think about taking a step inside the rain land. He won't stop the war in the world, but he will at least grant this land the peace that it has always wanted, because no one will ever dare to go against Naito. Listening to Yuriko's expression, Naito slightly revealed a thoughtful expression. In fact, Naito has never been interested in being a leader, however, after he thought about it, he found that it might be useful. When he was in Konoha, Naito could get any information he wanted from the Anbu, now after he left the village, all of his resources got cut off. Whether it's the location of the Baijua, Nagato, or even Madara, he will need to collect them all by himself, if he had any kind of resource that could collect this intelligence for him, it would be more convenient than running around alone. Moreover, Naito now has nowhere to go, especially while he has Kushina with him, they cannot stay in one place for a long time. Nagato is currently in the rain land, and it will be easier if he stays here and look for him. Naito can quickly kill him now and end everything if he finds him. Although, Naito is not concerned about having the Rinnegan power, however, if it's gonna ruin Madara's plans why not? While Naito kept thinking about it, Kushina nodded at him then whispered. We don't have any place to go, it's a good choice to stay here. Although the weather here is a bit annoying. As she said this, Kushina stretched her hand out to catch some of the raindrops falling from the sky. Upon seeing it, Naito nodded then said, Well, if this is the case, we will stay for the time being. If you go alone, you will never be able to take control of the village, Yuriko. There's also the five major villages who also will want a bite from the rain land. When the time comes, the situation will fall even more into chaos, it will be more dangerous. I cannot allow you to go alone. Naito nodded at Yuriko, at that moment, the former has finally managed to breathe a sigh of relief. Yuriko who has lost his beliefs, now has found another person to believe in. At least as long as he's on Naito's side, he will never be confused. He doesn't need to think on his own, he doesn't have responsibilities, all that he needs to do is to follow Naito. The same is true for Kanan, she believed in Naito's idea from the very beginning, the idea of protecting the closest people around him. Even Kushina was fine with that, as long as she's by Naito's side, she didn't care about what's happening in the world. Outside the rain village. Four people were walking at the borders of the rain village, the killer of both Hansa and Pain, Yu Naito as well as Kushina, Yuriko, and Kanan. The weather in the rain village was undoubtedly much stronger than the other small villages in the rain land. During the Second World War, Naito has done a lot of missions in this village, so he wasn't a stranger to the place. Kanan and Yuriko were also acting naturally. The only one who looked confused was Kushina. She was looking at the buildings around with a surprised expression. Is this the rain village? The environment is really different. It feels strange. This is where the rain shine abyss gathers, it is the main village of the rain land. Naito looked at Kushina then asked, speaking of this, the rain village should be the deepest place in the rain land right? Yes. Yuriko nodded. The whole place was surrounded by water. The entire village looked like an island in the middle of the sea. Naito sensei, what should we do next? Should we inform the elders of the village? Yuriko asked. Naito shook his head and said, No need, just follow me. The rain village was small, it's very different from the five great villages like Konoha and the sand. There's no such a thing as a kitch. Even Hansa was just a leader. They don't have the title Amkitch. Hansa was the strongest man in the village so he was considered an absolute leader. 
there's no such a person like Danza or Sakumo, no clans like the Senju, or the Uchiha, they didn't even have actual elders. In this place, Hanza was like an emperor to them, no one can refute his word. To put it simply, Hanza was the rain village. Go in directly. Yuriko got stunned first then he smiled lightly. For someone like Naito, why does he even need to inform anyone when he can directly enter from the main entrance? The next moment, Naito and the others walked directly to the middle of the village. All the way forward, Naito asked them not to hide their traces, soon enough this will drag some of the rain shine abyss toward them. Whoosh! Whoosh! A few shinobi from the rain suddenly flashed from the street and surrounded them. Who are you, and who let you in the village? The leader of this squad was about to talk, but he suddenly revealed a hint of confusion. He felt that Naito has looked very familiar, but he couldn't recognize him immediately. As for Yuriko and Kanan, because he was just a patrolling ninja. He didn't participate in the attack on the Akatsuki so he couldn't recognize them too. Finally, Naito looked at the Shine Abyss in front of him, then he shook his head slightly. At that moment, a huge number of the Rain Shine Abyss gathered around them. This large group of Shine Abyss made the civilians get terrified and hide. When there's some troublesome between ninjas, they naturally avoid getting too close. No one wants to be killed after all. Let your elites come here. Yuriko stood by Naito's side, then he took a deep breath and shouted at them. Those who heard his words suddenly looked at each other then burst into laughter. Who do you think you are? You want to see our leader? Are you dreaming kid? You're stupid enough to leave traces behind you that even us guards could notice and you want to see our leader. The laughter has finally come to an end, and all of those Shine Abyss drew out their weapons and pointed it out at Naito and the other. Seeing this scene made Yuriko terrified and couldn't help but look at Naito. If they came to invade the Rain Village, the answer would have been simpler, they would have killed all of them directly. However, they were here for another purpose, they came here to rule not to kill. If this fight starts, they will just end up killing all of them, and blood will never stop, he needed to step in and stop it before it began. Naito sensei, you don't need to fight with them, I will handle them. It's not necessary for any of us to fight. Naito looked around the place with a faint expression. It's true that he was here to rule and not kill, but he needed to show his power first. And this is was his opportunity. It didn't need a lot of effort from him, he just needed to think about it. Whoosh! In an instant, the whole place started trembling, and an invisible force suddenly burst out bypassing Kushina, Yuriko, and Kanan, then it directly spread in all directions covering the entire village. Both Yuriko and Kanan looked terrified, although that strange force has bypassed them, they could still feel it in their guts. There would have been no way for them to resist if it hit them. This is Spiritual Shock When the spiritual shock spread in all directions, the mind of every ninja near Naito went blank, and they could no longer think straight. Everyone in the entire village could feel that horrible force as it hit them, and all of a sudden, people from the whole village started to fall on the ground, unconscious one after another. Plop. Plop. Even the Shine Abyss who surrounded Naito and were about to attack fall on the ground like pieces of wheat. Only the leader managed to hold his ground and stand still, but even he didn't look all right. The horror on his face was indescribable. That man has finally remembered Naito. The center of the rain village, the tallest building. This is was Hansa's office, it's the highest building in the rain village, and is positioned in the center. At this time, 
Some elites from the Anbu were in that building taking charge of the village in the absence of Hansa. Hansa Soma should be back soon, right? The Akatsuki has been already defeated. Hansa Soma is currently chasing the head of that organization, it should be over soon. Well, no one can escape from Hansa Soma. He could even hold his ground against Konoha's Ashura and the Three Sanin. No one can defeat our leader. The admiration in their eyelids was evident, all of them respected Hansa, he was like an emperor to them. It can be said that Hansa is the strongest existence in the Rain Village. Therefore, everyone respected and admired him. However, just when they were discussing this matter, a horrible force suddenly spread around the entire village, and it could even knock out several people among them. Plop. Even those who managed to endure it felt like they are gonna to faint out at any moment, even the elites among them looked horrified as they thought that something wrong was happening with their bodies. The only man who didn't get affected was the Anbu commander of the Rain Village. He was a kid-level powerhouse but he couldn't help but feel stunned. This. What is this? Presence. Did Hansa Sommer come back? N. No, even Hansa Sommer doesn't have such an aura. This momentum is really terrifying. After he helped some of them regaining their consciousness, they rushed out of the building heading toward the direction of that mysterious power. On the street of the Rain Village, this is should be enough. Naito stopped the spiritual shock then he looked around and gently nodded, revealing a satisfied expression. This technique is excellent in getting rid of small flies. This will avoid him the trouble of dealing with every single shiner bee in the rain village, leaving only the strong people who can endure this technique. After they reach an agreement, he will no longer need to fight or kill anyone else in this village. At that moment, the leader of that group of Shinobi has frozen in his place in front of Naito. He recognized the identity of the man in front of him. He's the man who killed the third Kaiskich, the third Reikich, the man that people call the new god of Shinobi, and the man who managed to suppress Hansa. You Naito. With a terrified expression, he looked at Naito, although he managed to endure the spiritual shock before, this information made his mind go blank, and made his body tremble from fear. But the scene itself around him was more shocking and horrifying. It wasn't just the shine abyss around him, he could even see the civilians far away fainting out on the ground, in fact, all the people in the entire village were falling one after another from Naito's technique. This is too much. Kushina put her hand on her forehead helplessly. However, she somehow got used to how Naito solves troubles, he likes to overwhelm his enemies with absolute power because he's too lazy to explain himself every time. Yoriko had a dull expression that he couldn't wipe for a long time. It really solved a lot of troubles, but it's too exaggerating to attack the entire village at once. Kanan, on the other hand, has also looked shocked but more amazed. This is what does it mean to be by Naito Sensei's side. Finally, the leader of the squad has woke up from his shock, with a terrified expression and a trembled tone, he said, it turned out to be you. Why are you in the rain? The power that Naito has just revealed was overpowered, although it didn't affect him. He knew that if Naito wanted to kill him, it wouldn't take him seconds. Currently, no one in the entire village can stop Naito. The only person who can stop him is Hansa. But he's currently on a mission to kill the head of the Akatsuki. He bit his teeth and prayed in his heart that Hansa will come back soon before he destroys the whole village. However, the next moment has once again made him shocked. Yoriko, who was by Naito's side, has suddenly taken out a scroll, unsealed it, then threw a thing in front of him. This is 
H. Hans's head. Boom. The man could no longer stand still, his body was weak from Naito's previous technique, and looking at Hans's head on the ground made his legs tremble, without even noticing, he fell on his knees staring at his leader's head. Ha! Hansa! Hansa Sama! No! This is impossible! No one can kill Hansa Sama, this! He kept slamming the ground with his fist with a broken spirit and tears in his eyes. He simply couldn't believe that his leader was dead. Even after they lost the war he didn't feel this way, because he knew that Hansa was by their side, their leader will always save them, as long as he's by their side even the five great villages will fear them, but now, that man is dead. While he had that emotional break, he couldn't help but raise his hand and stare at Naito. There's no doubt that Hansa's death is related to him. No ordinary man can kill Hansa, the salamander. In other words, there's only one man who could kill him in the world, you Naito. Whoosh. Whoosh. The elites of the Rain Village were rushing over toward Naito's position from several directions with terrified expressions. Someone has invaded the village, and he could even do all of this just by his presence. Who is this man? Although that horrible force didn't affect them enough to make them faint out like the others, it made them feel their own smallness, they knew that none of them could deal with that man alone. The rain is just a small village compared to the five, with the existence of Hansa the Salamander it's relatively strong. However, the numbers of their elites cannot be compared to Konoha. With these small numbers, they didn't dare to rush immediately to the enemy position. They gathered each other first then they headed toward Naito's area. On the way forward, they couldn't help but notice the situation in the village with a stunned expression. People, Shinobis, civilians, they were all mold on the ground. There were no traces of scars on their bodies, and they couldn't help but think that the momentum they previously felt has something to do with this situation. Which is simply incredible. Finally, they came to the street where the accident happened, and they immediately saw Naito's figure. It's him. Why is he here? Just when they were shocked from seeing him standing there, some of them pointed his finger at Hansa's head, and for the moment, all of them felt like they got struck by lightning thunder. Their bodies were shaking from that strong shock to the point that some of them could no longer stand still. It's the head of Hansa the Salamander. The man who has been called a demigod is dead. No one could stand looking at his head, as their expression was full of sorrow. At the same time, they couldn't help but look at Naito with an incomparable fear. They didn't even need to guess that Naito was the one who killed him. In addition to Naito, who is the new god of Shinobi who else could kill Hansa? Moreover. The man has already killed two kidges before. Hansa is dead, and I'm the new leader of the Rain Village, does anyone have any complainings? Naito said this while he looked at the elites of the Rain Village. They didn't help but get confused, you Naito wants to rule the Rain. Isn't he a ninja from Konoha? However, some of them were aware of the rumors that were running around about how Naito left Konoha with Kyuubi's Jinshiriki. Now, it seems that these rumors are undoubtedly true. Someone suddenly looked straight at Naito's eyes then said, You're an outsider, we won't let someone like you. Boom. Before he could even finish his sentence, his body got shocked and turned into countless pieces. Silence. Naito retracted his finger back and glanced at the other, anyone else. They looked at each other, then finally someone banded a knee to Naito. It was always like that, they obeyed Hansa because he ruled them with power, they feared him, so they followed him. Now, after Naito killed Hansa and showed his strength and worth, these ninjas didn't have any choice but to surround her. 
The existence of the village itself is centered on Hansa, they won't survive without him unless someone stronger will take the lead. For example, after Nagato killed Hansa in the original, he took over the reign and appointed himself as the god of pain and no one dared to disobey him. It was this simple, show them your power, and no one will disobey you then you can choose how to rule. Yuriko finally understood how naive he was how much time and blood it would have cost him if he kept what he was doing. Naito showed them how small they were compared to him, made them understood by killing Hansa that they didn't have any choice but to follow him. He hurt him once so he won't need to hit them again. Kanan looked slightly emotional. If she were strong enough, her parent wouldn't be killed, even after she established with Yuriko the Akatsuki, they found it really hard to shake the rain village because they weren't strong enough. But it didn't take Naito much effort. Kushina has also sighed, and she was touched in her heart. If she could have her current power back when Uzumaki clan got destroyed, everything would have been different. Kanan believed in Naito, he was different from Hansa and also stronger, Hansa has ruled this land for so many years, but he has never been able to make it one of the major villages. However, as long as there's Naito and Kushina, even if they didn't know how to manage the village, Yoriko and Kanan will be there to help them and soon the rain village will be the strongest in the world. The news of Hansa the Salamander being killed by the god of Shinobi Unito was quickly spread to the entire world. A man who has been called a demigod once got killed by Unito. Although Hansa wasn't a kid, in the eyes of many people, he was as strong as the five kids of the five major villages. This is means that Naito has killed two kids and a demigod. Everyone was stunned by Naito's power, however, what was more shocking is the other news following this one. Yu Naito has taken control of the Rain Village and become its new leader. This news has made the entire world fall into chaos and caused an uproar amongst the small and even the major villages. Because this news has confirmed the rumors that Naito left Konoha and now he's establishing his new home. No one knows what happened, but sure Naito seems like he won't go back to Konoha. That's it for this video guy. Hope you like the video. Like share and subscribe the channel. Also tell me your recommendations in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching.